Now I'm going to preview the one seed South Carolina versus the three seed NC State women's basketball game, which will be played on April 5th at 6 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. And I'm going to go. I'm going to apologize in advance because I cannot memorize all this stuff. And I'm going to go over players that normally play for both of these teams in terms of the rotation here. First, I'm going to start with South Carolina and and all this. We know they're not invincible. Yes, they are undefeated and undefeated in SEC. But they barely beat Tennessee, who just fired their head coach. They barely beat Indiana, despite having a big lead. And they were pushed at times with Oregon State, but then they prevailed by 12 points. But I'm just saying that, and first of all, it starts with Camilla Cardoso for South Carolina. And she's declared for the WNBA draft, so... No COVID year for her. She's going to use. She's projected to be a lottery pick in the WNBA draft, though. And the thing is, you can't blame. 14.1 points per game. 9.4 rebounds per game. 2.1 assists per game. 0.6 steals per game. 2.5 blocks per game. 2 fouls per game. One point five turnovers per game, sixty-seven point two percent on 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 free throws on twenty-five attempts, and one for one on threes, which was that game-winning shot against Tennessee. I'm just saying that is the truth. Okay, Chloe Kitts. I'm going to go ahead and mention two. And I do not know the injury status on some of these teams here, so I'm just, and I just definitely know Iowa's situation, and I, of course I know UConn will only have a healthy players. I'm pretty sure South Carolina is healthy. And same thing goes for NC State. Okay, Chloe Kitts, 9.3 points per game, 5.9 rebounds per game, 0.5 steals per game since it's close to 0. 0.6, 0. 0.7 blocks per game, 1.5 turnovers per game, 1.5 fouls per game, 69.3% on three um, free throws on 68 um, on 88 attempts, and 1 for 2 on threes. So neither big is opposed, uh, neither forward slash center aka post is a three-point shooter though Camilla Cardoso had to do that and that one game of course Bree Hall is the next player 9.5 points per game three rebounds per game 1.1 turnovers per game 0.6 steals per game 1.1 foul, fouls per game 70 percent on free throws but that's on 50 attempts 38.7 percent on threes on 124 attempts Raven Johnson is the next player I'm going to mention here 8.1 points per game, 5.3 rebounds per game, 4.9 assists per game, 2 steals per game, 1.6 turnovers per game, 1.1 fouls per game, 61.7% on, on free throws on 47 attempts, 35.2% on, on threes on 71 attempts. And the last player that's a starter for South Carolina is T. Hina. T. E. Dash H I N A Pio Poa Pio Po P A O P A O. Now, I apologize if I butchered that 10.9 points per game, 2.7 rebounds per game, 3.7 assists per game, 1.6 turns per game, 0.8 steals per game, 0.6 fouls per game, 86.2 percent on free throws on 29 attempts, 46.3 percent on threes on 177 attempts. Okay, now the bench players for South Carolina. Ash, Ashlyn Watkins, 9.4 points per game, 7.1 rebounds per game, 1.3 steals per game, 2.4 fouls, I mean blocks per game, 1.5 turns per game, 2.3 fouls per game, 55.7% 55, 55 on, on free throws on 97 tenths, 0 for 1 on threes. So not a three point shooter. Sonia Fegan is the next player I'm going to mention. 6.7 points per game, 3.8 rebounds per game, 0.6 blocks per game, 1.1 turnovers per game, 1.9 fouls per game, 68.3% on, on free throws on 63 attempts, and 14.3% on threes on seven attempts. So not a three-point shooter either for South Carolina. Malaysia 
M-I-L-A-Y-S-I-A, -I, -I, -A. I apologize if I butchered that, Full Wiley, F-U-L-W-I-L-E-Y, apologize if I butchered that, 11.9 points per game, 2.1 uh, assists per game, 2.9 rebounds per game, 1.6 steals per game, 0.8 blocks per game, 1.6 turns per game, 2.2 rebounds per game, 78.2% on free throws on 101 attempts, 34.4% on threes on 131 attempts. And the last player I'm going to mention for South Carolina is Tessa Johnson. <coughs> Excuse me. 6.2 points per game. 0.7 steals per game. 0.9 turnovers per game. 0.6 fouls per game. 85.1% on, on free throws on 47 attempts. 42.5% on threes on 73 attempts. So that's all the players I'm going to mention on South Carolina side of things and now for NC State. And I apologize if it's not in particular order. It's, it's just because they don't have the stats thing on the ESPN app anymore for those particular players. Yes, I could go online and just go back and forth, back and forth, but that takes way too long. First of all, it will start with Sonia Rivers. And as for NC State, you have no pressure on you going in this game. Play loose and easy. You have nothing to lose. I'm just telling the truth about that. I mean, all the pressure's on South Carolina, not on you. Okay, first of all, Sanaya Rivers, and ironically, she went to South Carolina. 20.7 points per game, 6.2 rebounds per game, 3.8 assists per game, 2.2 steals per game, 0.9 blocks per game, 2.5 turners game, 1.5 fouls per game, 73.5% on threes on 151 attempts. 25.8% on threes on 93 attempts. Madison Hayes, I'm going to mention, a 10.4 10 points per game, 6.9 rebounds per game, 1.7 I mean, steals per game, 1.4 turns per game, 1.4 fouls per game, 69.7% on threes on 99 attempts, 40.7% on, on threes on 135 attempts. Isaiah James. I'm going to mention 16.7 points per game, 4.6 rebounds per game, 3 assists per game, 1 steal per game, 2.2 turnovers per game, 1 point, I mean 2.1 fouls per game, 77.9% on threes, I and mean on free throws on 122 attempts, 77.9%. Yeah. 34.4% on threes on 209 attempts. Reese Baldwin. Or, I mean, River Ball went. River. My, my bad. 10.6 points per game, 6.9 rebounds per game, point, I mean, 1.3 blocks per game, two point, I mean, 1.6 turns per game, 2.4 fouls per game, 81.1% on, on free throws on 90 attempts, so not a three point shooter. And last starter for NC State is Mimi Collins. 10.7 points per game, 6.2 rebounds per game, 1.2 turners per game, 1.9 fouls per game, 77.6% on, on, on free throws on 85 attempts, 39.1% on threes on 92 attempts. Maddie Cox, I'm going to go ahead and mention, and I know she only, I'm only mentioning her because she played last game, 1.2 points per game, 2 rebounds per game. 63.2% on on free throws on 19 attempts, 22.7% on threes on 22 attempts. Okay. Zoe Brooks, I'm going to go ahead and mention 8.9 points per game, 3.8 rebounds per game, 3.5 assists per game, 1.4 steals per game, 1.9 turns per game, 0.5 blocks per game since it's so close to 0.6, and 1.8 fouls per game. 71.7% on 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 free throws on 99 attempts, 18.8% .8 on threes on 64 attempts. But I'm going to double check if there's anybody else on NC State side of things. That I need to mention. Yeah, I might need to mention... 
two other players and that's Lacey Steele which 3.5 points per game but she hasn't played since the first round game but I'm still gonna go ahead and mention 0.8 fouls per game 0.6 turn, 0.5 turns per game 0.5 steals per game 80% on free throws on 20 attempts 31.3% on on threes on 64 attempts and the final player I'm going to go ahead and mention even though she's only played in 21 games this year is Mallory, Mallory Collier but like I said I don't know if it's yeah she actually is not injured it's just she hasn't played since that first round game 2.1 points per game 1.8 rebounds per game one foul per game, 56.3% on on free throws on 16 attempts. So that's all I got to mention. So obviously you don't know about the fishing going in this game. You got to play through it. I mean, I'm just telling the truth. You got to find ways to win. And you got to hustle the other team. You got to reap on the other team. You got to take care of the ball while forcing turnovers because sometimes your best offense comes from your defense. You got to have good side selection both offense on, on offense and make it harder. For them on defense, and don't give up anything underneath, especially side, especially underneath their own basket to try to score on. I mean, I'm and of course, you need to limit your foul trouble while gaining them in foul trouble, especially the better players. I mean, that's or even like anybody in general. I mean, that's the thing. You want to get them in foul trouble as much as possible. You got to contain the shooters, contain the slashers. I mean, and make those three-point shooters two, take long twos instead of threes. I mean, make them take shots that they normally don't take. I mean, that's the thing. Of course, you got to make adjustments on the fly, both offense and defense, not just from first half to second half or first quarter, or second quarter, third quarter, fourth, but or second to third, but possession by possession, time out to time out. I mean, you got to withstand the other team's runs at times. You got to get some points in the paint, points in transition, a.k.a. fast break, points on turnovers, and second chance points. Of course, you want to limit that as much as possible for the other team. So that's definitely a notable. And, of course, you want to make the best players ineffective as much as possible. I mean, in terms of letting scores, make them ineffective from shooting. I mean, that's the truth about this. Trying to think, what else? You got to be more mentally tougher team and prepare for both man to man and zone defense. Obviously, I know NC State does run a zone. I know. I'm pretty sure, and we all know South Carolina runs man to man. That's Don Staley's bread and butter right there. And you got to be pre prepared for like the press and kick, or even like pack a shack and like you have to. In like the foul game situation where they try to, the opposing team is trying to get the ball back, you gotta be ball tough, and you went, you don't want the other team to live at the free throw line. I mean that's the thing you don't want that to happen. But if you get to the free throw line on offense, you've got to make them count, especially in games like this, where you could go to the national championship on the line. In South Carolina, you gotta. I'm just saying this to South Carolina. Be prepared for NC State to push you some. I mean, I'm just telling the truth because NC State is no pushover team. They beat Texas, which I get Texas is not the strongest one. See, you're better than Texas. I get it. But they have no pressure, and they're going to play the hair on fire in this game. I'm just, and they even beat Stanford, too. NC State did. And, and all this. And you can't be intimidated in NC State. You can't be intimidated by looking at their jersey. I mean, look at what you've done. There's, you were picked, preseason picked 8th in the, in the ACC. Unranked to begin the year. And yet you made a Final Four. I mean, that's the thing. 
of course you want to get the opposing team to shoot below 40 percent on th from the field and be like below 32 i mean 33 percent on threes too so yeah it's all about for uh, make causing the opposing team to fluster and make some mental mistakes i mean that's the thing try to so and getting some blocks getting some steals of course you don't want to have like live ball turn because live, those live ball turnovers could lead to points on the other end and don't like have illegal screens or, or offensive fouls on offense that's i get that's a dead ball turnover as well as throwing the ball straight out bounds but you don't want to have that those type of turnovers in this type of game and you got to keep your cool because you don't want to get like a flagrant one or flagrant two or a technical foul. And I'm just saying that to the coaches as well. Because you don't want to give the other team free throws and the ball. I mean, that's the thing about it is. And we certainly don't want to have any type of situations where there has to be multiple ejections either. So I'm just telling the truth on that. So anyways, if you like this content, hit the like and subscribe button. See you guys later. On our six subscribers, of course, the ultimate goal is a thousand more. So, money out this course, like the video, comment video really helps YouTube algorithms so more people can see it. Send the videos help as well as so some more people watch. And if you're watching and not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell as well.